Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, salam sejahtera. Alhamdulillah. And um, as for today, um, I like to share with you there is some information about uh, three major thing. So uh, perhaps that we can discuss about the differentiations of what means by rubrics, answer schemes of answer key for this session. So um, on that note, all right. So I do believe that. Um, We already embarked uh, into many uh, types of assessment, uh, not only focusing on the conventional assessment, but also on the alternative assessment. And perhaps a little bit of information about the rubrics uh, for uh, to ensure that when we conduct our alternative assessment, rubric is the complementary on how making sure that we can assess our students and how can we uh, use the rubric as a feedback to monitor student progress and perhaps that the importance of a rubric uh, is not only meant for uh, lecturers or teachers uh, to assess their students but how does the rubric reflect into the authentic assessment and how can we uh, make sure that the outcome has been met to make sure that Uh, along the line we want to achieve the outcome we can communicate uh, through the process and the progress and of course to make sure that the progress and also uh, the developments of the students uh, the feedback and the improvement is something that we look forward so meaning that um, as I mentioned uh, in the early discussion uh, when we talk about the rubrics it's not only about how does the students only Uh, getting their grades or mark at the end of this uh, at the end of the semester or maybe at the end of the of the terms but also we are looking at how does the feedback the, uh, and how does the student improve over the time and on that note um uh, i sure that we use the rubrics it's not only about uh, giving them some sort of feedbacks but also putting uh, the ownerships of learning in which that the student able to reflect how does the progress uh, affect their performance and this kind of reflective thinking allow the student to become be matured and also to be ready when they want to uh, embark into the next coming assessment that uh, allow them to give a few chances to ensure that they can gain um, um, the knowledge or the skill set uh, according to the time given and when we talk about <coughs> about uh, alternative assessment um one of the glaring issue or maybe a point of discussion they always mention about the fairness how does the rubric can give a control in the sense of yeah we know that that we're doing on the alternative assessment the lecture can come up with a different perspective different opinion or maybe a different marks and uh, the purpose of the rubric is to ensure that Um, the fairness has been given a clearly to our students to make sure every single assignment has been um, um, shared to the student uh, with a certain criteria, with a certain weightage, with a st- certain standard, and with a clear descriptors. So that's the reason why the rubric more functional if we can uh, develop a proper rubric to ensure that it's not only benefit to the lecturers but also benefit to the students. All right. Uh, there are two types of rubrics, all right? Uh, the first one is analytic rubrics and the second one is holistic rubrics. So what much difference that we can uh, see from here, all right? So that was very interesting because of when we talk about the analytic rubrics, normally the first indicator that we should have in the analytic rubric is having the criteria. So meaning that you have the outcome. So from that outcome, What are the criteria that allow you to achieve the outcomes, right? So along together with the criteria, you should have the skills. So the skill can be a range, can be a liquid, can be a percentage. It depends on the purpose and also the preference of the teachers or the lecturers. And the most important part, uh, I sure that almost likely that Uh, many rubrics just focus on the criteria and also the skills, but they are forgotten about the descriptors. So for me, that how can we distinguish, for example, in this table, low or moderate or high by having a very 
clear desire performance descriptor has been written so we need the ability to write uh, the descriptors and allow us uh, allow uh, the assessor to distinguish uh, another between to another and this analytic rubric normally we used uh, to give a more feedback to the students or even you can give a forward feedback sorry a forward uh respond to the students and perhaps that they can use the information to to um to improve themselves and the second types of uh, rubrics is holistic rubrics uh, it more focus on um the the scores uh, getting by the students and the cumulative descriptors that allow uh, that describe the whole aspects of criteria and Uh, this holistic give us the overview, the performance or the competency of the students. Uh, these are two different purposes that need to be entertained to make sure that which one that you prefer to use, right? So, and um, for sure that you want to understand and you want to know better on how can we develop a good rubrics. Uh, there are many uh, examples there are many procedures there are many mechanism that you can develop your rubrics but um the easiest way is to to develop a rubric has been divided into five stages all right the stages number one is define purpose of learning task so yes we have the outcome that we want to achieve uh, from the outcome we um, initiate Uh, the assessment task and the assessment task need to identify whether you want to do the conventional or alternative assessment. If you opt for the alternative assessment, then you should define the purpose of the learning task. So the guiding question has been raised here. Will I use the rubric to assign learner grades? Will I use the rubric to provide information, feedback to the learners and what are the learning outcomes of the task and how will learners demonstrate that they have achieved the learning outcome. So the purpose of uh, the assignment is to assess whether you want to focus on the cognitive, psychomotor, or affective, and how can you extract it, all the criteria to ensure that it fits with your assignment and it also fit with your Uh, learning outcome and by knowing your purpose then you need to understand what kind of rubric that you want to choose as i mentioned before we have the analytics and also the holistic rubrics so there are a guiding questions if you opt for the analytic rubrics <coughs> what do you want to provide detailed feedback for the learning ties What do I want to provide informative feedback for each component? And do I want to provide formative feedback about the learner's performance on individual elements of learning tasks? So these are the questions that should be raised when we, want, when, when we want to opt for the analytic rubric. So how about the holistic rubric? Do I want to assess the learning task as a whole? Or do I want to make a general judgment or do I want to assess learners' overall performance and do I want to provide summative feedback? So these are two types of uh, rubric that we need to understand where you want to use, uh, where it which belongs. So then you choose which one that you uh, prefer, right? And... By having step one and step two, then we go deep and deeper to understand what are the criteria. So we need to define the criteria. I think that the most difficult part is to define what is the best criteria that we should use because of the guiding question has been mentioned here. What do I want learner to learn from the learning task and what ways will learner demonstrate what they have achieved in the terms of knowledge psychomoto or effective domain and what are the attributes of the final product so meaning that you have the bigger outcome you have the learning task you have to go and dig dive to understand what are the criteria that allow you to assess based on the purpose given so 
this some this maybe need a, a little bit of studies a little bit of um concentration and focus because of we are not mentions about how many criteria that we, we should put in but the criteria that really reflect to the task all right so by looking at the criteria and we start to uh, thinking about the design or the writing skills and i think that this is where that you start to use the writing skill to decide the levels of mastery with the corresponding scores and i do believe that when we, when we deciding on having uh, the writing skill is more like on the options or the preference of the teachers or lecturers to find what is the best mechanism putting writing in their rubrics and i think that uh, maybe some of you used to like or used to 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 you uh, like to use uh, likert scales for example you want to use four likert scale five likert likert scale or maybe some of you want to use 10 likert scales but other than, other than that you have an option to use a uh, range you can use a percentage you can use whatever numbers that portray that able you to distinguish from another competence competency and um for the step 5 where is you need to rewrite the descriptors for skills level so meaning that when you develop when you create it when you write the performance there are three characteristics should be in your mind all right the first one is the characteristic must be observable measurable and specific all right number 2 it must be parallel language to describe performance wording for each skill must be consistent so maybe i think that most of the problem having a rubric or developing a rubric the inconsistency in terms of wording and the third and the last one is performance descriptors varied in degrees the variation of degree is well mentioned is well described with the amounts with the degree with the intensity so meaning that from the liquid one and two liquid two two liquid three two liquid four or two liquid five there are huge and variations of uh, degree uh, has been described the amount of work the intensity of the work should be uh, uh, looked at by the students all right and uh Yes, I do believe that maybe some of us created the rubric for the purpose of ourselves and we start to use our rubric uh, easily and we conduct in our classroom. Yes, that one is the easiest one. But to having a proper rubrics, um we need to <coughs> oversee this because of uh to create a proper rubrics, the best one is if we can extract it from the literature, make some sort of meta contents or data analysis and try to extract uh from the literatures and try to understand what are the, the what are the important criteria that we can use uh, for our rubrics and number two, it's good to have the interview with the expert if you have the experts maybe your friends uh, or maybe your colleague have uh, some sort of idea or maybe experience i think that is good to have the expert on board and let them to oversee the instruments and let them to verify the instrument and start to calculate the levels of expert agreement for the content validity so i think that the most appropriate one is to having this uh, kind of consideration then we can establish a good content validity for our rubrics and perhaps that there are a lot of examples of rubric outside there but um i do believe that uh, to design a rubric is not only um looking at um how uh, good or how comprehensive uh, the rubrics but the most important part how does the rubric can be used by other parties if for example if you are not the one uh, teach that subject so i think that in terms of usability in terms of practicality these are the thing that should uh, be in our mind and perhaps that when we uh, try to develop our rubric we are uh, really look at these matters these are the example of myself we are these are the the, the the rubric has been developed by me this is where that i putting the the explanations idea form and structure also the originality a part of the criteria or the criteria category 
to assess the reflective skills and part of that uh, i putting uh, the um, skills in the forms of exemplary into the incomplete with the Likert numbers 5, 4, 3, and 2. And the descriptors you can see here, uh, how can I distinguish exemplary and also the profession is depending on the noun using here. So I using the explain, excellent explanatory. And for the four, I using the good explanatory. For the partial, I using the sufficient. And the incomplete, I use the poor explanatory. This is what we call the degree, the intensity, the amount of work that distinguish from five, four, three, and two. So the other, the other way around, this is one of the another rubrics. I think that uh, I'm using the similar concept and formula, but again, um, the rubric helped me, all right, uh, to understand if the students, where the students should be put in. So I, if I want to give mark, and how can I make sure that the students A and the student B Uh, based on this criteria. And for your information, uh, this information is not uh, the rubric. I think that most of them think about, think that the rubric is something that is very confidential to the student. They are not because of you can share your rubric to your student early, maybe at the beginning of your classroom or at the beginning of the task to make them to understand How can I fulfill all the criteria to ensure that I can come up with a quality project, a quality task, and also uh, to allow them to communicate with the rubrics and ask the lecturers on how can they fulfill uh, the criteria. So this is where the feedback uh, play important roles. This is how does the rubric help to communicate uh, the expectation and perhaps... Um, the rubrics uh, can um, maintain uh, the validity, the reliability, the consistency, and the fairness of the assessment. So uh, to the students, uh, for me that, um, I do believe that there are many uh, reference, there are many examples that we can get from up there. But uh, if you can use a very simple concept that I have shared with you, I do believe that you can construct a very good rubric development. So uh, I hope that with this information, we we'll enlighten you on how can we uh, design a good rubric. And I hope that you can benefit this content. And see you again, inshallah. Assalamualaikum and have a good day, everyone.